It's some more of the the same type stuff. Okay. But um, some of these were a little bit trickier. All right. So let's go with um, back to some exponent problems. Okay. If we could go with the cube root of a hundred and twenty-five raised to the n times five to the four n. Oh wait. Oh hold on. I should I should have said that better. My bad. My bad. So the 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 cube root is going to be over like all of this stuff. Okay. So, so it's all right. So we got one twenty five to the n times five to the four n over twenty five to the negative n. All under the cube root symbol. Like that. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. Um, all right. Let's take these steps one at a time. Uh, first of all, what do you notice about all three of the bases? Um, they are all like factors of five. They all have a common exponential base, which is five. Okay. In other words, I can write each of these three numbers as 5 to some power. Okay. That's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to write the 125 as 5 cubed. And always use parentheses when you do that. Okay. That's to the n. This one's already 5. So that's 5 to the 4n. Put parentheses around it just for clarification. The bottom one is 5 squared to the minus n. Okay. And then the cube root of the whole thing, I can do one of two ways. The way I prefer to do it is to use a fractional exponent. Okay. Just because it's easier to think about that way. I don't know. You could use the cube root sign if you like, but this gets really cumbersome when you start taking fourth roots, fifth roots, and things like that. All right. So you could do it either way, though. Now, the next thing I'm inclined to do is to multiply those, all of these exponents inside the parentheses. Always start from the inside and work your way out. Work inside to out. Inside okay. to out. So over here, that gives us 5 to the 3n mm -hmm. times 5 to the 4n okay. divided by 5 to the minus 2n. Yep. Now, and it's all to the 1 third still. Okay. Okay. Now, there's always multiple ways you can do this. I could combine the numerators by adding the exponents, and then I could divide this thing by subtracting the exponents. But subtraction always ends up presenting more chances for mistakes than addition does. Okay. So I'm inclined to always take negative exponents and just put them on the other side of the fraction bar. Got it. In other words, that minus 2n, I can make 5 to the positive 2n as long as I put it on the other side. And it doesn't matter whether it starts as a denominator or a numerator. Okay. Always do it. So this thing now becomes 5 to the 3n times 5 to the 4n times 5 to the 2n. Okay, so all to the one third power. Yep, so to the one third. Now what do we get when we do all of this and it's all addition? We don't have to worry about subtraction at all. Four plus three plus two, so we get nine. Five to the nine n. 
all to the so, one third, and now yeah. I'll combine those exponents. What do you get? Um, nine times one third, uh, five raised to the three n. That's the answer. Awesome. And we did it all with as much addition as we could without subtraction. Okay. I could have done subtraction. I would have ended up with 5 to the 7n divided by 5 to the minus 2n. Now you got to do 7n minus a negative 2n to get 5 to the 9n. You can still get there, but it involves subtraction. So yeah, I, I can only really try to tell everybody that if you can do addition instead of subtraction, do it. It's why synthetic division works so much better than long division. Long division involves subtraction. Synthetic division is always addition. Okay. Yeah, so I just got to remember that when I see that negative in the exponent, that's a sign that you should put it on the other side of the fraction. Yeah, exactly. In other words, if I said, how, how can I write that better? Well... I can just write it as 3 to the 4th. Yeah. Now, typically, okay. we're always going the other way. In other words, typically, you might say, well, what is 2 to the minus 3rd? Well, that's 1 over 2 cubed. So, usually, I'm yeah. starting in the numerator and putting it in the denominator. But it goes both ways. If you have a negative exponent in the denominator, you can just move it to the numerator and change the exponent to positive. Awesome. All right. Okay, so how about one like um, parentheses 3a to the negative 1 minus b to the negative 2 uh, parentheses and then all that raised to the negative 1. Okay, well, I can't just apply that negative 1 to both of these terms. That's what I did, so I think that's probably why I got it wrong. And the reason is, is because subtraction is going on. Oh, yeah. Uh, if multiplication was going on, then I could do it. In other words, if, if that was multiplying instead of subtracting, then my first step would be to apply the negative 1 to every term in the parentheses, including the 3. Okay. But it's not. You've got subtraction going on. So the first step, I've got to be a little careful. First step is I'm going to put everything that's in the bottom in the bottom. And notice what I've done. That's all I've done. Okay. I haven't changed what was in the parentheses. I've just taken the entire expression, put it on the other side of the fraction bar, and changed the negative one to a positive one. Okay. So, oh, now, yeah, that's like what you were just explaining. Right. Now, let's figure out what we got down here. Well, let's see. What do we have? We have 1 over, and then this is 1 over 3 to the positive A okay. minus 1 over B squared. Okay. In other words, this term is... 1 over 3 to the a, and this term is 1 over b squared. Okay. Okay. Doing this one step at a time. Now, our next step is to combine those two fractions. What's the least common denominator? In other words, here's, here's what I'm going to do. So you're going to have to get that common base there. Right. What's the least common denominator between 3 to the a and b squared? Uh, 3 to the a b squared? Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. 
And this is the way I like to do it, just so I don't make any mistakes. Now what goes there? And what goes there? Uh, B squared is going to be on the left. Correct. And then 3 to the A is going to be on the right. Yeah. And it's easy to see that that is correct because I can easily get it back to the original fractions by canceling the B squareds there and the 3 to the A there. Mm -hmm. okay, now I got common denominator, so I can erase one of them and move the line all the way over like that. Yep. Now, how do I handle that answer? Now we're going to have to uh, like flip it to get flip and the, multiply, or just in this case. It's really flip and multiply, but we're going to be multiplying by 1. So yeah. the final answer is going to be 3 to the A, B squared, all over B squared minus 3 to the A. Okay. Yeah, That's I'm just going to have to... That was a tough one. That was a tough that was one tough. for sure. Because... There's such a tendency to want to multiply that exponent by these exponents. Yeah, that's what I did. You kind of have to do, you have to do the simplest thing you can do, which is to apply that the way I did it there. And then okay. translate these two. In other words, I can't move that to the numerator either. Because it's part of this expression here that's being subtracted. So I right. actually have to go from this step to that step there to figure out what to do. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, I just got to remember that when I see that addition or subtraction in the middle. Addition and subtraction can't... always is harder than multiplication and division. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, uh, think of the numbers one-third and one-fourth. Uh, if I try to multiply one-third by, or let's say, uh, three-fourths, okay, multiplying them is a piece of cake. Just multiply yeah. across. It's adding them that's tough, because when you add them, you have to find that least common denominator. Dividing yeah. them is a piece of cake, because division is really multiplication. It means one-third times four-thirds. Mm -hmm. So that's a easy it's only addition and subtraction are always tougher, and they always complicate a problem, like that last problem we just looked at. Yeah. Because it looked it looked if it had been simple, multiplied, then. then the whole thing would have been much easier. But the fact that subtraction was going on is what made mm -hmm. it tough. All right, I'll keep an eye out for that tomorrow. Okay. Um, how about... Um, there, there's like a couple of these kind of problems, and I think this one's supposed to be simpler, and then I'll throw a, a harder I, one I out do there. Have, I do have an 8 o'clock session, so I'm going to have to go at 8, but... Uh, All right, that's fine. So you kind of estimate how long you think each of these problems might take. But. Yeah. Um, I don't think this one should take too long, but I'm kind of confused by it. All right. Uh, so it's going to be 2 raised to the log base 3 of 27. And they just want you to evaluate that without a calculator? Yeah, it just, say, it just says evaluate without a calculator. All right, so let's examine this. If I'm trying to evaluate that, mm -hmm. I let's let it equal something. Now I know what to do with this. As long as it's oh, yeah. all by itself, it's hard to even think about. But as long as I let it equal to some unknown value, now it's easy. How, how can I turn that into an exponential expression? Yes, now we're just going to get uh, 3 raised to the x equals 27. So then uh, 3 cubed, so x equals 3. Right. So now I can replace that with a 3. And that's how I evaluate it, which means that's 2 cubed, which is 8. Oh. 
The, okay, that the looks key, the key to like a lot harder. The key is really creating this variable. Because otherwise, how mm -hmm. do you evaluate that? I mean, it depends. If, if you train yourself to be able to evaluate those without the variable, that, that's fine. Uh, you can do that. But the moment you put the variable in there, then it just becomes a regular log equation, and we know how to do those. Yeah. Okay, so just kind of deal with the log first and then take what you get and make that the exponent. Definitely. And, and you know when you look at that log expression that there is something common between the number 3 and 27. Yep. They share an exponential base that's the same. Okay. Awesome. Um, all right, after seeing that, I think, I think I'll be good with those type. But there's this other one that's kind of confusing. Okay. So we'll go with that one. Um, it's 2 raised to the 2x minus 11 uh, times 2x plus 28 equals 0. Did I get all my parentheses correct there? There were actually no parentheses in the problem here. There was just a little, like, multiplication sign. Between the minus 11, 11 the exponent 11. up here? Um, no, it is not. Okay, so this is correct? Yeah, that looks good. That, yeah, that's perfect. All right. Well, when you say there were no parentheses, there's just a multiplication sign there like that? Yeah, yeah, that's what that's it looks different. like. Oh, is it really? Means, yes, it is. Because this means the 11 is only multiplying the 2x. And this oh. plus 28 is separate. The moment I add parentheses like that, it means the 11 is multiplying the 2x, and it's also multiplying the plus 28. Oh, and, um, sorry, and the... Uh... That 2 is actually raised to the x, not multiplied by the yeah. x. So it's like 2 raised to the x. Okay. Is that right? Um, yeah, like the, the, se the second 2 is also raised to the x. Oh, so it's like that. Okay. It's like that. And I then... I was trying uh, to figure out how we were going to solve the other one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I did a bad job verbalizing this one. So it's 2 raised to the 2x minus 11, and then, yeah, there you go. Now it's perfect. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so I saw this, and I just had no idea what to do at all. Well... I know how to solve it. I'm trying to figure out how to show you how to solve it. This is a quad. Yeah. This is what I call a quadratic in disguise. Okay. If I were to write this the following way, let me think for a moment. Mm-hmm. Um. Here, let me teach you substitution because that's really the best way to view these. Okay. If you're looking at a quadratic in disguise, similar to if I haven't had trig yet, but let's say I had this. That's a quadratic in disguise. And the reason it is is because if you take the middle term and square it, you get this. And that's really what quadratics are. Okay. And you can solve it as a quadratic in disguise. Okay. Now, instead of that, I'm going to show you how to recognize it. Always let you be that middle term. Okay. And that's 2 to the x, which means u squared is 2 to the x squared which is 2 to the 2x. Oh, okay. 
which means I can rewrite this quadratic as u squared minus 11u plus 28 equals 0. And this now factors very nicely into u minus 7 times u minus 4. Okay. Which means u equals 7, u equals 4, and since u is equal to 2 to the x, I've got 7 equals 2 to the x. Okay. And now i got to solve that for x. That, that's what they want, right? To solve for x? Yep, solve for x. Okay, so I've got 7 equals 2 to the x. How do I solve that? Um, put it into a log. Take the log of both sides. Okay. And I always use natural log. It's no more efficient to use log base 2 because then you have to bring in change of base. But once I take the log of both sides, now I can put the x in front and divide both sides by natural log of 2. And that's my answer. There's the answer. Now, make sure you understand what I did with the substitution here. Okay. First of all, I didn't have to do it that way. I could have simply said, once I recognized it as a quadratic, I could say 2 to the x minus 7 times 2 to the x minus 4. And you'll notice that if I do this multiplication, I get 2 to the 2x, minus 11 times 2 to the x plus yep. 28. It's just oh. hard to see it when you go directly from that step to that step. Mm -hmm. Because if you recognize it as a quadratic, then maybe you can go directly there. But I've always just found that it's easier if you use u substitution and mm -hmm. substitution is a huge part of calculus. When you get to calculus uh, next year, are you still going to Dartmouth? Yes, I am. I actually cool. just got my acceptance letter today, so cool. pretty exciting. So you'll take calculus at Dartmouth, and U substitution is a big part. You may not have run into anything called U substitution at this point. Not yet. This is actually an excellent place to use it because it's so hard to do this without using the U substitution. Once mm -hmm. I use U substitution and get it looking like that, now we know how to factor. Uh, right. That's pretty easily factored, but factoring that directly to that, not that easy to do if you're just doing it for the first time or second time. Right. And, uh, sorry, the, what, what was our answer that we got for that? Was it... Well, we got 7 equal 2 to the x, because okay. u is equal to 2 to the x, and u is equal to 7. Oh, I see. There were two answers. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, That's okay. Yeah. No, we also have u equal 4. So 4 is also equal to 2 to the x. Mm -hmm. which means x is equal to 2 here without logs. Don't need logs to do that. No. So we have two answers for x. One is natural log of 7 divided by natural log of 2, and the other is x equal to 2. And okay. that's what you would expect, because whenever you have a quadratic, you generally get two solutions. When you have right. a cubic, you expect three solutions. When you have a quartic, you expect four. Now, sometimes some of those solutions can be the same. You know, they'll have multiplicity. But for most of the time, when you are looking at a quadratic, you expect to find two solutions. And okay. I wasn't expecting it because I missed it. So I'm glad you asked about it. 
uh, yeah, is so all I did was solve that one. Uh, I also needed to solve that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Awesome. Good luck. Casey, good luck. Get good sleep tonight. And you know the drill, I'm sure. Yep. Thank you. Competitive tennis player. I'm sure that that's something you concern yourself with a lot is making sure you get a good night's sleep, huh? Yep, always good to get, get to bed early. Oh, it helps me out. I'm sure it does. Yep. All right. Well, good luck on your test. And, uh, Thank you. You're going to Trig next semester, is that right? Yep, I think we start off with Trig next semester. So Feel free to contact me. I love I'll call contact. you then. <laughs> it's my favorite subject to tutor almost. All right, well, sweet. <laughs> All right, Casey. Talk to you next right, time. Have a good holidays. Thank you, you too.